Hello, paper and glam readers. I'm so sorry we were a few minutes late. YouTube decided to act extremely strange and I was in a room by myself and then I was all black and only my voice was, was showing up. So thank you for your patience. Tonight we are discussing my true love gave to me and I am so excited to finish out the year with you guys. And our icebreaker tonight is what was your favorite book of 2017? It does not need to be a book club pick. It can be any book. You know, because I'm sure you need more books on your to-read list. I know if you're like me, mine is already 400 pages long, 400 items long, not pages. But, you know, I just love adding a new book to my to-read list. It makes me feel very, I don't know, like wealthy in that I will never run out of books to read. So those of you who are watching in the in the live stream, I would love to read your comments and see what your favorite book of 2017 is. And Margie is going to kick us off by telling us her favorite book of 2017. Sorry, we're having more technical difficulties. It's been a really fun book chat so for us so far, those of us that are book chatters, because we've had several issues now, but let's see if we can get Margie. Yeah, Margie. That work? Is that better? Okay, so starting again, um, I read a book by Stephen King called The Stand earlier this year because it was on the Amazon Goodreads list that I'm trying to read my way through, and it was daunting, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then I read his book um, called On Writing. And he talks about how he became a writer and where he gets certain things from and all of that. And it was fantastic. It's something I would totally go back to. I like writing. I can't really claim to be a writer. Um, maybe someday. But for the time being, that was my favorite book of 2017. So I think my favorite, which I've talked about the series before, is the Queen of the Cheerling series. I read the third one this year when it came out and was super pumped about it. Um, the ending was not my favorite. That's a spoiler. Sorry. But um, I was just super excited to finish the, um, the series. And then I also listened to the Magnolia story on audio while I was commuting. And, oh, I just really... Okay, I love Chip and Joanna Gaines, like almost every other person on the planet, obviously. Um, but then the two of them going back and forth reading their story. It was just a really sweet story and quite hilarious at times. So um, definitely recommend that. And then I just enjoyed them reading the story and telling their perspective. So um, I'm cheating and having two favorites. Merry belated Christmas and Happy New Year, Paper and Glam readers. So my favorite book this year I read was uh, The Company She Kept by Archie Mayer. It's a thriller mystery novel about a senator in Vermont that's killed and you have to read about her life and all the detectives and it's a big mystery puzzle that you kind of have to figure out while you're reading it. I thought it was really great. And then I also read The Silent Girls and really liked that as well if you're looking for two thrillers to add to your book list. Hi guys, sorry. Um, my favorite for the year is um, A Paper and Glam because that's really my only goals <laughs> for the year is the books that we have. So I'm so grateful um, to be a part of the book club because it keeps me <laughs> it keeps me reading the books that we have scheduled. Um, but for the year, I really, um, I couldn't decide between The Year of Yes um, by Shonda Rhimes and um, I know why the cage bird sings. Um, I've been wanting to read that one for a while because it's a classic and it's Maya Angelou, but um, between the two of them, I really enjoyed them. Um, 
and I just enjoyed hearing about their life and hearing about their childhood and just respecting them as strong women um, and, and, and the way that they are able to tell stories because I really love stories. So I couldn't choose between those two, but those were my two favorite for the year. Um, I try to go through my Goodreads and see which ones I gave five stars to, but I think one of my favorites was definitely Trevor Noah's memoir, Born a Crime. Um, I just love Trevor Noah, and I think he's super hilarious, and um, I just thought it was really poignant that people just, you know, it really just sheds light on how racism is contrived based on society, especially, and to hear a voice that's like a non-American voice that experienced racism in a very different way and in a different society. And um, I think it's really interesting and uh, sheds, sheds light in a different way than a lot of the other books that, you know, we from, that are just from American um, perspective. And I also really liked a book called Vasa in the Night. Um, it's like super weird. But I really liked it. So both of like two of my favorite books were ones I read early on in the year. Awesome. I think for me, I agree with Tabitha and a few of the comments. The book that stands out the most to me is definitely Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. And that was our first book for 2017. And if you're thinking about catching up for 2017, we do have some of the planner kits in the outlet still. And I think they're like four dollars. So fun way to get organized and read some of our previous picks and there was a few good ones um i love gift by the sea too or is it gifts from the sea that one was oh so good that one's right in my wheelhouse if i had to pick a non-paper and glam book club pick it would definitely be oh you pretty things which is just the best chiclet i've read in a long time it was a just a spot on satire of LA, which I really appreciate and just cel celebrity culture. And it was hilarious. It just had me laughing out loud and it was just really well done. So, Oh, you pretty things is like the perfect cool read. It was a book of the month pick, which is how I discovered it. And it was always good. That's probably the first book of the month pick that I have gotten read and then just absolutely loved. So super fun. I think Chiclet is kind of one of those genres where it's a little bit hard to find books that are done well. And, you know, like as much as the Shopaholic series is really fun and there's, there's some fun ones, it's hard to find Chiclet that's also smart too and just kind of makes you think at the same time. So that book definitely did all three for me and made some really, really poignant observations about life in LA that I had not even thought about before. So that was cool. All right, moving to our first book club discussion question. So it's always the same. Our first question it is, what was your experience reading My True Love Gave to Me? And small twist, if you were with us in June and you read the summer version of this book, what was your experience reading uh, My True Love Gave to Me versus the summer version? So I love My True Love Gave to Me. I think that, you know, of course, like any story compilation, there was definitely stories that you know, they weren't my cup of tea, but what I appreciated most about this book is that it was the ideal Christmas read in that it was so short and just light and easy to just like pick up and, and drop off and read a story here, read a story there. And it was just nice to kind of have something that wasn't quite so in depth for the holidays. I don't know about you, but when I'm really busy, my brain is kind of full. So it's hard for me to concentrate on books that are like really long or really really challenging to read. So I, I just appreciated the the levity of my true love gave to me. And as far as the summer version, it really was the same for me, the same experience as the summer vision, version. I read a lot of reviews that said the original Christmas my true love gave to me version was, uh, it was a lot of people felt like it was stronger than the follow up. But I don't know. I think they were about the, the same for me. How about you, Margie? I know you weren't with us in the summer, so don't feel, of course, obligated to, to answer that part of the question. Yeah, so I don't have that part to compare it to. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, really, really enjoyed it. There were obviously some stories I liked better than others. Um, you're going to get that in a book compilation like this. Um, I started to get into the habit of like reading first thing in the morning, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, actually when we started doing the um, 
God and Glam Bible study. So it's like get up in the morning, I read, I do that reading, and then these were perfect follow-ups because then I was like, oh, I'll read a story from this book. And so it was great. It was the perfect like bunker down in your bed with a nice cup of coffee, like it's almost Christmas time type read, and I um, really, really enjoyed it. I don't remember my star rating. I think it was a four. But um, if it's not, I'll go change it to a four because I really <laughs> enjoyed 90% um, of the stories in this. Um, I enjoyed it. I appreciated the short um, snippets as well. Uh, it's been a busy month for me. So, um, I mean, and everybody, obviously. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed And I like, I mean, I think summer, to compare the two, like, I love summer. But as far as, like, theme Christmas is a better theme to me. Um, if that even makes sense. But, um, so I, you know, I just appreciate, and I guess maybe with Christmas is a time I want more specific, like, Christmas and New Year's, like, that holiday feeling. So I appreciated that. Um, and then, although it'll probably change, and this is always the case, like, I always kind of like, eh, give a star rating, but then we talk about it, and I'm like, oh, I like this book way better than I thought. So, um, I'm going to start out with a three, but who knows where it'll be at the end of the night, um, as usual. So, um, but probably a three. I mean, it was, it was a good book. Um, not earth shattering or life changing, but I liked it. So I gave the book four stars like I did the summer one because I thought the stories, most of them, I didn't like a few, but I mean, I didn't like a few of the summer ones either. But overall, I thought all the stories were really cute and it was nice to get some background on a few of the stories that we read from the summer. Or I guess it's not background, it's a prequel to the stories we read from the summer because I really enjoyed a, a few of those couples. And it was nice to have Jenny Han included in this section because as we all, all of us love her, uh series that we read in book club sorry i had a brain moment so I, I i think they both compared but like sarah said having the christmas theme is definitely something i get into more than the summer theme and i hope we read more books like this in 2019. okay so the way i experienced the book this year uh with this month is um really procrastinating and waiting <laughs> until the last minute to purchase the book and um, realizing, oh man, it got my dates all mixed up and was like, oh, I really have to figure out a way that I need to get the book done before we chat. So when I was looking, I was trying to decide, am I going to do Audible or am I going to actually try to just read through the book? And so when I did the sample, I did not like the lady's voice in the sample on Amazon. So I was like, oh gosh, I can't listen to that. So, <laughs> so I decided to get the um, iBook version. And when I got the iBook version, I was like, okay, this is great. I was reading through. And then I realized that with all this life going on that I would not be able to finish just a straight read. So I had to go and purchase the Audible anyway. But it was a good thing because they had different voices for different stories, and I didn't think of that in advance. But I will say that I I enjoyed it. I gave it a three star, um, just because, like I said, it was like different stories. Some of them were like, yeah, I didn't really like, but there were others that I didn't. I I did like that they were all Christmas, you know, Christmas themed, and it just seemed like a cute way to enjoy a bunch of different authors in one go. So yeah, that's how I experienced the book and I give it three stars. Um, like Hayden, I gave it four stars. I thought it was maybe like a tiny bit better than the summer one, but I just think maybe for the same reasons of, as what Sarah was saying, I think it's just easier to feel like more like thematically entrenched at Christmas time. Whereas like summer stories just seem like stories and they happen to be in the summer. Um, it doesn't have that like, magical sense that Christmas stuff has. Um, there were, I, it's the first story I really loved. And then the next two got me worried that I was not going to be good. And then I, I kind of felt like it picked up from there and I kind of gave everything else a three, four, five. I put little like tapes in color. That way I knew which ones were overall almost everything 
was like between a three and a five. So I gave it a four star. I forgot to give my star rating. Sorry, you guys. I, it's like you said, it's kind of hard to rate a story that is, or write a, rate a book that is so many different stories. But yeah, I would say three. And I just had to go get my scarf because Sarah's scarf game was so strong and I've been wearing this all the time. It's my favorite Christmas scarf. Anyway, so on to number two, what was your favorite story and why? So I was really excited to read a couple stories going into the book. And that was, uh, let's see, Rainbow Rowell's story, just because I did really enjoy Eleanor and Park. And then Jenny Han is my all time favorite young adult writer. So her uh, trilogy, the PS I Still Love You trilogy is like all of our reading favorite. And we're reading the third one in April. So I could not wait to read her story. And then also the Gail Foreman story, I was really, really excited about going in because she wrote If I Stay and Where She Went, which are two really, really good young adult stories if you haven't read those. I'm definitely not a young adult reader. It's not my typical genre, but I try to keep I try to keep things pretty broad, and those stories were my, my top three young adult stories, other than Twilight. I still love Twilight. I think it's awesome. Uh, so I would definitely have to say that the Jenny Han story was my absolute favorite. It was so cute and just simple and short, and she just has like the best little turns of phrase, and we'll get to that in the, the next question, because my favorite quote is from the story, but she just has a way of giving, putting words to everyday life and just making them glitter. And she didn't disappoint, even though it was only like a, maybe a 20 page story. So that was, that was definitely my favorite. And with regard to what you guys were saying about that, you think this version or the Christmas edition was better than the summer edition. I think you're totally spot on with the fact that it's just around Christmas because with the reviews, I was going into this thinking it was going to be significantly better than the summer version, but it really was about the same, but I think it was just like the majesty of Christmas that that maybe put it over the, over the summer one. And maybe, maybe that was the reason for some of the reviews. So I didn't think about that. So I love discussing these things with you guys. What was your favorite story, Margie? Um, actually the stories that I really looked forward to turned out to not be my favorites. <laughs> um, it was kind of the surprises. So I loved Angels in the Snow, um, the Matt De La Pena one. And I also loved the one near the end of the Star of Bethlehem. Um, yeah, by Allie Carter. I think it was those kind of cozy, like Angels in the Snow is when he's like locked, he's house sitting and you can't go out and, um, and then the Star of Bethlehem when the girl kind of escapes her life and gets to go live this farm girl life for a couple of days. Um, I loved both of those. And those actually had some of my favorite quotes as well. Um, but yeah, I most of them. There were maybe only two that I just didn't love. And so um, it was kind of hard to pick a favorite. So Margie, sorry, Hedy, I'm going to interject. At least I give you a warning this time. You read If I Stay Right because you gave me the movie like for Christmas. You might not remember, but it was like three or four yes. years ago. You gave me the movie. So you had read If I Stay and Where She Went, right? Yes. And okay. those were great. They were actually random finds at the library when I first moved to Denver and I didn't have any friends. So all I did that year was read. <laughs> and my roommate and I would go to the library and pick out all the young adult books. Um, and I did love hers. I really liked Gail Foreman's story in this one. Um, that probably would have been my next top um, pick. And so, yeah, she was just really enjoyable. And I don't know that I've actually ever watched the movie of If I Stay. I gave it to you, but I don't know that I've seen it. Um, but yeah, I just really enjoy her writing and the little, like, yeah, personal flavor she brings to those stories. Okay, I was so curious. I was thinking about you when I was reading that story because I was a little bit disappointed with the story and maybe it's because my expectations were a little bit high from loving If I Stay, but I thought it just fell a little flat. And fun fact, If I Stay was the first book I ever reviewed for the Paper and Glam Book Club. I think it was like September, September 2014. So I might have a little just nostalgia for Gail Foreman for that reason, but I was a little bit disappointed. I was wondering if you, if you felt the same way. Oh, no, I actually really liked it. I think there's a quote that I'll talk about in the next question um, that I really appreciated from her. So. 
So I also have a question since you brought up the Matt De La Pena story. You didn't listen to it, right? Mm -mm. So I, I'm curious if anyone else listened to it. It felt a little bit patronizing. I don't know if that's just me. Um, but yeah, the narration was like a little bit off. And I I don't know. It, it felt like a little bit patronizing from like, a, I you know, I'm Mexican and it looks like the, the by his name, the author is also... A, you know, either Spanish or Latin of some, of some form. So I don't know that the audio really got on my nerves. Uh, and I just, yeah, you guys in the comments or, or any of the book chatters will have to know, let me know if you found that to be true on, on Audible. All right, Hayden, sorry I kept interjecting. It's actually Sarah's turn, so I'll let her go before me. <laughs> I was just going to say anything to me. Um, Cutting people <laughs> off, interrupting, terrible <laughs> moderating three years later. <laughs> all good <laughs> um what was the question oh favorite story i think i want it well i'm second guessing myself a little bit i really liked the lady and the fox i liked the magic of it i did not like the end like how things panned out so like no spoil i don't know there was something off in the end for me but i was totally sold all the way up until that point um, I just loved the, I don't know, the mystery and the magic. And um, I also really liked Midnight. Um, I have a, like, I love New Year's Eve. It's so magical itself. I think, yeah, I think I'm just a, I don't know, love the magic of it. So, um, but that was, I think that was my favorite. Ah, I'm sorry. I was trying to, <laughs> I was just having problems. So, of course, Sarah and I love the same one, The Lady and the Fox. So I'm going to go with my second pick, which was It's a Yuletide Miracle, Charlie Brown by Stephanie Perkins, because those are the ones from the summer book. And I was like, oh, oh my God, I know who these people are. We're going to get like a prequel or something. So I was really excited to read it. And they're, God, they're just so cute. I was really happy with what happened with the summer one. And then I agree with Sarah. I really like The Lady and the Fox, but the ending was so weird. I didn't understand the dress and like it just didn't come together like I think the author wanted it to. But I still really like the magic and the mystery and how like none of the family questioned the magic of it. They just kind of let it happen. And then I also really liked the midnight one. Oh, and Krampicus. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, favorites for me are Angels in the Snow and the one, uh, Sophie Roth, the one with the um, with Hanukkah, you know, where she celebrates Hanukkah in the college and um, her kind of feeling out of place in, in this, um, like a country town and she's from the city. Uh, I really like that. Um, I think someone else already mentioned angels in the snow. I don't know. I just thought that was cute. Like the idea of just being trapped and it's snowing. Cause there's something just so peaceful about when it snows because everything gets shut down. And I can just imagine like being able to meet someone and just like, you know, have like your own moment. I thought that that was really cute. Um, I think I said, I, I mean, we're only talking about ones we like, but I know that I like hearing the perspective that you guys have about the one with the fox because I was, I didn't understand any of that. I was like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> so I'm happy to hear some of you guys talk about the magic of it or, or a different perspective because it helps me um, to hear another perspective on something that was just like, I'm like, I'm not getting this at all. But um, over, but then at the same time, I did like the Jenny Han one, you know, about the elf and the, and the little girl. Like, that's so cute. Um, so, yeah, I would say that the majority of these ones I liked more than I disliked. Um, so, yeah, those were my picks. Um, I don't know. I, I liked several. I liked Midnight's a lot. I thought it was a good start to the book. But we were saying in the chat earlier that we thought maybe it should have been the end since it was a New Year's story rather than a Christmas story, that maybe it should have come last. Um, I liked the Jenny Han one and it, because it was magical and cute and simple and short and um, it was just really refreshing. And I thought the Krampus one was funny, but it had some like stylistic things that made me not like mark it like, as high. Like I kept like thinking about it more. Um, I, the ones I, I liked at the end were 
the Welcome to Christmas California. At first, I didn't think I was going to like it because just like looked, I was like, that, that, I, there's not an exit right here by my house like that. And like, I'm like, it's, I swear that's not an exit. I asked my husband, I was like, on the Mojave Road, is there a place called Christmas California? Because it would be on the Mojave Road. And like, he goes out there in the desert and stuff. And he's like, no. And I was just like, so, and I had to just like read it and not get hung up on like accuracy of stuff. Um, although there is a Boron mine and it's a whole city, a giant city. And it's in the city called Boron. <laughs> um, but I really ended up liking that story in the end. And my favorite quote came from there. And um, yeah, so that's what I liked best. Awesome. Thank you for giving us that context, Gina. I totally felt that the New Year's story should go at the end as well. And then I thought, you are a seasonal junkie. Most people do not plan their life like that or plan things like that. So I'm glad I'm not alone. It's one of the reasons I love this community so much because I always have that experience where I'm like, oh, good, I'm not alone. <laughs> so I have a question on the summer one versus the winter one. It was just the Stephanie Perkins one with North and it was a Marigold. Yeah, North and Marigold that the, let's see, the this was part one and then part two was in the summer, right? Is Or was there another one that I don't remember being or was there characters that were in the summer one that I should have remembered? You guys will have to let me know in the chat. And then we will move forward to our third question, which what is your favorite quote or scene? I love collecting quotes. This is always my favorite question. And from the Jenny Han story on page 96, the top of the page, this just perfectly illustrates why I love Jenny Han. So she's describing like this, this winter snowy day. And she said, there's always snow on the ground here. It makes everything look diamond dusted. The thing about snow is it's very quiet. The air is hushed. It's like church. It's reverential. The sound of my boots crunching along the ground is the only sound I hear besides the sound of my heartbeat as I walk along the path. She just perfectly captures that feeling of that, that snowy day where everything is quiet and it feels exactly like church. And I never put that together before. So I love that quote. What was your favorite quote, Margie? Feel free to share a couple if it's hard to pick your favorite. It is hard to pick a favorite. That's like the hardest part about this whole book club. Um, but I did love the what the hell have you done, Sophie Roth, um, where she says, you can't undo loss. You can't unmake a mistake. Um, just kind of these, in the midst of these really like fun holiday stories that are kind of more young adult and light, like there are some very poignant quotes in here that I really appreciated. Um, but the one that actually really hit me because it's exactly how I feel was in the Welcome to Christmas California where she says that Christmas Eve is my favorite. I think the anticipation is more fun than anything else. And that I think in our family, it was always like you open one present on Christmas Eve, it's always pajamas. We watch a Christmas story and like going to bed on Christmas Eve is my favorite thing. I love it. Cause you know like that the next day is gonna be the best. Oh my gosh, I was in La La Land. I don't even know what was happening. Um, <laughs> I, my favorite, so the dog came and like flung my book across the room and she's coming back to get me, brought her baby, um, and took my book. So I don't have the exact image, like the exact scene, but it was in that um, Lady and the Fox. I really liked when he tore off the you know, the fox on his jacket um, and gave it, and I would need to reference the book to remember her name. This is so horrible. Um, and gave it to the girl. And then I liked her sewing it back in like on the inside. I don't know why. I just, I liked the, I liked, um, I liked that concept, you know, like him taking it off because it was, the sea was captured and then um, the nicely stitching it back on his jacket, like, over his heart. I don't know. I liked it. Um, and I really wish the dog hadn't gone my book across the room so that I could wrap them through a little bit better, but sorry. Okay, so my favorite scene was on page 22 in the story Midnight by Rainbow. Right, Jesus. 
<laughs> rainbow rowl and it um it's at the bottom of the page you can have all those things he said carefully you can have me mags if you want me i've always wanted you she said mortified by the extent to which it was true Noel leaned in to kiss her, and she dropped her forehead against his lips. They were quiet, and it was cold. Happy anniversary, Mags. Happy New Year, Noel. And I just like that because it was a very sweet and romantic way to wrap up that story because you, you could see where it was going, but you weren't sure if it was ever going to get there. And it kind of describes that first real flicker of love that you get as a young adult slash 20-year-old slash 30-year-old or 40-year-old when that first real fire spark hits. So it just really touched me, and it was a nice way to start the book. It got me rolling into it. So um, my favorite, and I have a favorite quote, but I have a favorite scene, and it comes from Star of Bethlehem when they're in the church and, um, you know, the whole family is there and the aunt who lost her daughter um, in the car accident starts singing the hymn and she can't finish singing the hymn and um, the girl who's pretending to be someone else just so happens to be a professional singer. What? And then she stands up and finishes the song. That's just so beautiful, right? <laughs> so um, that was like my favorite scene. I just thought that was so cute. Um, and I kind of didn't pick up on the fact that she might be a singer. You know, they just kind of just threw that one out of there. Like, all right, okay, she's a superstar. That's, that's, I wasn't expecting that. So that was my favorite scene. Um, I have two quotes. The first one, um, Margie started saying, um, but I liked the whole thing and it's from Welcome to Christmas, California. And it's the, it's more fun than anything else. I kind of lost that. The idea that something, food, traditions, an arbitrary date on the calendar can be special because we decide it should be special, not just for ourselves, but for others. I've had people around my whole life to make things special for me, even when I didn't notice it. And you've been working so hard to make life special for everyone who walks into this ridiculous diner. Special for you. I just like the idea that things are special because we create it, um, you know, and that we craft it into something special. So, um, like celebrate, like my husband's family celebrates, like when they came from Cuba and like, you know, got their freedom, like they celebrate that. And, you know, so I think the things that we create and make special, I liked that quote. And then um, from Star of Bethlehem, uh, it's on page 288 at the bottom. It says, sweetheart, when you lose someone, you lose a little bit of yourself too. And then it, she goes on and the quote says, and that missing piece, sometimes you have to lose the rest of yourself to find it. Besides, I'm pretty sure I would have run away too. And I liked the ants like, attitude about running away but just the idea of that like when you lose people you're every time you lose someone then you um lose part of yourself i love that first quote you shared and i was actually thinking about making that with my favorite because it's so true of seasonal living and actually donald miller who's one of my favorite authors he wrote a book on this and it's called a million miles in a thousand years and the book, it just makes a million amazing points that I never thought about. But one of the points he makes about memories and about experience is that most of the experiences that mark us, there's some effort, a significant investment that went into creating those memories. And it's not necessarily like you put a ton of, you know, time into like planning a party and that, you know, and the party was amazing and you'll remember it forever. Of course, that's a great example. And Christmas is, is a great example, but also like those investments in relationships and just those investments that we make in our lives, how those pay out. And I read that book, I think it was January 2015 or 2016. I'm not, I read it shortly after it came out. And yeah, that book just really marked me. And that quote reminded me a, a lot of, of what Donald shares in that book. Uh, before we move on to the next question, does anyone feel strongly about the girl who woke the dreamer? I think it's so interesting when like my least favorite story will be somebody's favorite and vice versa. But that one was so dark and I had such mixed feelings about it. At first I was like, oh, this is way dark. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what to think about this story. And then I started to notice some like really interesting turns of phrase that uh, just really made me stop and think and go like get my highlighter and highlight the book. And then one of those was on page 300. And uh, she's, she's praying and she wakes up the dreamer and um, she says, please, I am alone. 
And then it says, if her fear were a creature, this would be its bones. Alone, alone. This was the fear that wore all other fears like skin. Not that was so true. And the more I thought about it, like every fear really is boiled down to the ultimate fear of it, that we'll be alone. And yeah, I, that one gave me much pause for contemplation. But the story was like really, really dark for me. I don't know if anyone else felt that way. Okay, so we're kind of moving into two more to read list questions and it is what is your favorite Christmas read and you can absolutely take a pass on this but I thought that it would be fun to kind of get some Christmas titles and I really haven't read much that's specifically Christmas outside of the books that we've read for the Paper and Glam book club. I have a pretty pretty good list of books that we can read in in December's to come so that we always have a, a long list but I thought it'd be fun to like exchange some holiday reads. So I I'm gonna skip this one because all of mine are on a, a on a list that will ultimately be for the, the Paper and Glam book club, but I was wondering if anyone else had them. Let's see. I know, Margie, you skipped it. So, Hayden, do you have any favorite Christmas reads? I have to say, the all-time favorite read um, for Christmas I actually got from this book club, and it's the one we did last year, Letters from Father Christmas, and I listened to it, and I have to say, that has to be the best Christmas book I've ever listened to. I actually re-listened to it this year when I was putting up my Christmas tree because there was so much whimsical Christmas sounds and polar bears and elves and it just made it feel like the season and I just really enjoyed Christmas this year so I have to give Lisa Marie five thumbs up for that one. Uh -huh. Thank you Hayden you're so good to me. <laughs> the, oh sorry can you guys hear me sorry um I'm sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulty. Um, I, I have a favorite Christmas read, but I don't know the title. Right now, it is actually um, my, um, it's, a, it's a little Bible, and inside the Bible, there is the Christmas story, and my daughter read it for the first time this year, and it was so, so sweet, because it has the Christmas story in a way that a little a little, little kid can understand, and um, she was so tickled by it. She, you know, she's a new reader, so she loves reading to us whenever she can get our attention, so she read that one over and over and over for the Christmas break, and I can't think of the title of the Bible, but I will look it up and try to post it if we guys if we post this but right now it's just my favorite because she's a new reader and it's so sweet to see them experience books and and you know in an exciting way so that's what's on my on my mind as a favorite right now so i actually read skipping christmas several years ago at christmas time and loved it so i'm excited to read it again um i just remember being super hilarious um and also i talked about this one last year but um i still like one of my all-time favorites is the magic christmas it's part of the sweet valley twins series um so so cute for so for anybody with like young kids it's amazing it's, like one of the best ever um so those will be those are my two favorite favorites um my boys and i just finished reading a boy called Christmas um, and oh, sorry I thought I accidentally muted myself and we really liked it it was it's just super cute and Hayden if you liked the one from last year I think you would like a boy called Christmas um because it's about well it's a little about a little boy who becomes Santa Claus I don't know just his like travels through Finland till he finds the North Pole and ends up there and like how he becomes magical and stuff and there's like sense of humor and there's the elves and and pixies and trolls and it's just really cute and whimsical um like middle grade book but just very cute and fun read Ooh, i can't wait to check that out that sounds so cute oh my god i wish christmas wasn't over I am excited that one of the recommendations in the book chat was the Elon Hilder brand's Winter Street Trilogy because that is on my list of like future Christmas reads. I actually haven't read any 
Christmas books other than when I was a kid and the ones that we've read together, of course. So I can't recommend any and, and speak to them other than our reads. But I was listening to the What Should I Read Next podcast because you guys so glowingly recommended it in the last reading chat. And so I started listening to the first episode and I'm totally hooked. It's draining like all of my time in the best possible way. I am listening to every single episode straight through uh, while taking copious notes for my to read list. It's so, so good. And one book that came up was uh, Mr. Ives Christmas. And I'm really excited to read that in the future. I'm sure it'll be a book club pick one of these Decembers. But that that's one that I, I purchased because it just looked so good. And it's so highly reviewed. So I linked to that in the description bar because that one is what I'd never heard of. And I learned about it from the What Should I Read Next podcast, which I learned about from you guys. So I love learning about new things that I somehow miss, especially because I have been following uh, Modern Mrs. Darcy for years, and I somehow missed that she had a podcast. That was really exciting but to get to get connected to that. So thank you for that. All right, our last question is, if you loved my true love gave to me, then you'll also enjoy, and kind of fill in the blank, and this is kind of a good opportunity to get to know maybe some of the authors that are in this book or some of the things they've written that other readers have loved. So of course I've mentioned Gail Foreman's uh, If I Stay and Where She Went books. The movie's also really well done. Like it's stuck to the book perfectly. And of course the Jenny Han trilogy, which we're reading together in April. That'll be really fun. Um, but yeah, as far as as far as young adults, I I don't have any others that really have like captured me. I thought Eleanor Park was really well done, but I don't know if it's just me or maybe I haven't read enough Rainbow Route. But her stories kind of follow the same the same trope to me a little bit. Like even this story reminded me a lot of Eleanor and Park, and it probably didn't help that the narrator was the same too. So it kind of like took me right back into Eleanor and Park mode. But does anyone else have any uh, young adult? Uh, recommendations i know a couple of you skipped margie and you have one it looks like um on the rainbow roll line um landline was my favorite one of hers even more so than eleanor and park i think um i really enjoyed that the ones i kind of thought of were christmassy um if you like the kind of multiple authors um let it snow by john green and two other people that i don't remember their names um they write three they each write a story and they connect in one small way so like one story connects to the next in some tiny way and that was a great christmas read um the other one someone in the comments mentioned um the nightingale by kristen hannah um, as their favorite book of this year, and she wrote a Christmas one called Comfort and Joy that is much smaller and quick and fun and cute, and we read that last year um, for our, like, the book club I'm in with my church, um, and we all loved it just because it was her, like, quality writing while being a fun, quick Christmas story, so um, all of those are great. Am, am I the only one, other one who has one? Yeah, it's along the same kind of Christmassy lines. Um, and I think it would be like equivalent of one of these stories just expounded to maybe like a short novel, I think is about the length of it. And it's What Light by Jay Asher. So, um, kind of, I would say it's kind of like the North Marigold story because it's about a girl who owns a Christmas tree lot and her family and then she goes down to work it in Northern California. and um. You know, and it's just like a cute, like little love story like this. Sorry, I was busily linking that Kristen Hanna book down below, as well as the Winter Street um, books by Elin Hildebrand, because those look so cute. And it doesn't hurt that the covers are also just adorable. I like want to take a picture with my Christmas coffee, but Christmas is over. So next year makes me inspired for next year. All right, that is a wrap on our discussion of My True Love Gave to Me. So moving into next year, looking forward to next year. I'm so excited that so many of you have chosen to read along with us for next year. And Hayden just said she has one. I think I might have skipped you. Go ahead, Hayden. Did I miss you? But you're on mute. Hayden? Sorry. There we go. 
I was just saying that I thought we were looking for short story novels, compilations, not young adults. So the young adult novel I read like three years ago is called Penelope by Rebecca Harrington. And it's set at Georgetown University and the girl just gets there and it's kind of a coming of age story about her college experience. And it is a super fast read. I mean, it is 511 pages, but I don't know. That's what my iBook says. I don't think it's really that long. But it's really cute, and I definitely say if you're looking for something short and cute, I would read that. And you could even read it in August when it's time to go back to school if we want to be seasonal about it. I love that. I love the opportunity to read seasonally. <laughs> it's a little bit harder than you would think. And I often get questions like, what's the best books for fall? And I'm like, oh, I love Gatsby in the fall, and, and then I can't think of anything. Halloween's easy, but, like, there's this kind of – not Christmas, not, not Halloween, not like New Year can be a little bit tough. There's lots of good Valentine's ones too. Anyway, all right, on to 2018. So we are reading my, I almost said my true love you to me. <laughs> when Breath Becomes Air next year, and this book I've been dying to read since it came out. So, so excited we're getting to it. I'm really hoping it'll be similar to Year of Yes, and then it's just like the perfect way to kick off our year together. And I really am excited that um, we have so many new members of our community uh, reading along too. So that should be fun. Um, remember that starting next year, this is really important, make a note in your planner, starting next year, our book chats are not gonna be on the Paper and Glam YouTube channel. They're going to be on the Paper and Glam Book Club YouTube channel. So there's a link to it, um, you know, right on like the side to my channel so remember that the live stream will be there I'll still link it on Facebook and on Instagram I didn't do Instagram today because I was running around I just got back from Napa so I didn't quite get the link up on Instagram but I'm gonna share the link so you can go directly in but if you're used to going the to the YouTube channel first and, and just clicking right in there it won't be on on this one so just make sure you're subscribed to the book club one and we also have a book club Instagram too that I'm really gonna work on getting updated so far I've just been sharing like fun little library shots and kind of books foe, but I'm really hoping to to keep that one up to date with like what I'm reading and reviews and stuff because I think that would be really fun as well as getting our discussion questions up early and getting a little more organized for 2018. I always have the best of intentions, but then it's like book club day and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta put up the questions. So, you know, I'm working on it. I'm work in progress. And the Glam Read stickers, last but not least, we have Oh, the glare. We have really cute reading stickers. Oh, there we go. Not that you can see them right now, but um, if you have not gotten your Glam Read stickers, these are so fun. I designed them specifically for planning time to read and also, um, you know, tracking how much you've read in a month and your reviews and just cute reading inspiration. So those are in the shop. We have, this is the winter and spring bundle, but we have the summer bundle available, the fall and holiday avail uh, bundle available. And then we have them as a 365 too, which is kind of the Costco bundle version. And there's some 50% off from last year that are the fall and holiday version. And those are like almost identical to the to the new, the new version, except there's a little more room to write your book title in the review boxes. That was the only change we made. So that is all the housekeeping. I can't wait to see you guys in 2018. I'm going to link the Paper and Glam book club channel down below right now, just in case that's easier for you. And yes, have the best new year. And I can't wait to bring in a very glam new year. I'll see you the last Thursday of the month in January. Thank you so much for making time to hang out with us. I was talking to someone the other day about how like reading book, a book is so fun, but then closing it and talking to people about it and discussing it is kind of like the dessert. It's kind of like, you know, you can ingest a book and, and it kind of becomes part of you. And then like, but there's kind of something missing until, until you, um, talk about it with others. It's kind of like the frosting on the cake. So thank you guys for being the frosting on my cake. And without further corny analogies, I will see you in 2018.